Hello, and welcome to the first ever bonus episode of Movies, colon, They're Pretty Good. And this is this bonus episode is all about the Oscars. Uh, I'm planning on doing a short series of these. I don't know how many episodes, uh, but I wanted to do one now that the nominations just came out, and then I'll end it with a post-ceremony episode and just talk about the ceremony and everything like that. Talk about what won and everything like that. So... Uh, what I wanted to do is just uh, go go through the list of the nominees um, and just talk about which ones I've seen so far. My plan is to try to watch as many of them as possible, but uh, that doesn't always work out. I usually just get through the uh, Best Picture nominees and like a few of the other categories, but I'm going to try really hard this year to try to watch all of the nominated films. So... All right, so starting out with the big show, the best picture category. All right, so 10 nominees this year. Uh, I've seen half of them at this point. Uh, let's just uh, let me list off the nominees first. We got All Quiet on the Western Front, a uh, remake of a 1930s film, uh, Avatar The Way of Water, Elvis. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. The Banshees of Inishirin. I think that's how you say it. I forget. Uh, the Fablemans. Top Gun Maverick. Triangle of Sadness. Tar. And Women Talking. Okay. So, right off the bat, the ones I've seen are Avatar, Elvis, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, Banshees of Inishirin, and Top Gun Maverick. So half of them, like I said, um, the way I would rank them, like so far, my pick would be everything, everywhere, all at once. That's so far. That's my favorite movie of the year. Just amazing. Blew me away. Uh, real special movie. Just made me feel good. Uh, every time I rewatch it still, I feel the same way. I've seen it about five times at this point and i still feel like just as good about it so it's just a perfect movie i love it so much really hoping that that gets the win this year so far i still need to watch the other five but so far that is my pick for number one uh my second favorite out of the ones i've seen would be top gun maverick i was blown away by this one i had seen the first top gun way back like I mean, not when it first came out. That came out before I was born. But I saw it uh, maybe, like, right around, like, just after high school, I think. Uh, and I enjoyed it. I was just like, okay, that was good. You know, now I've seen it. I could check that one off. Um, and then it's just, like, you know, the random references are in my brain. But I, it's not a movie that I think about often or not ever, like, oh, like gotta rewatch top gun or top gun was so good or anything like that I literally just think like some like jokes about the volleyball scene and that's about it like that's literally that all that sticks in my head about the original top gun so when found out they were making a second one i'm like eh, okay you know if i see it i see it and then i kept hearing all this buzz about it i was like really like top gun 2 can't be that good and and i saw it so i went in with super low expectations and i was amazed how much i love that movie like i feel like five minutes in i was already like tearing up and i teared up quite a bit throughout that whole movie it was just really well done really great uh just really well made movie if if not a little predictable you know but it was just an amazing time at the movies like it was just that good it it was made to entertain and it did that and it pulled everything off everything it was trying to do it did well so uh i'm also gonna i'm gonna try to avoid spoilers as much as possible so if i'm sorry if i'm sounding like super vague on everything but i'm just giving you my quick thoughts you know maybe post oscars i can get a little more spoilery if you guys want but all right so my th third pick um, my third pick is going to be Avatar, I think. Uh, that's another one that I was surprised how much I liked. Uh, I guess not too surprised because I did enjoy seeing the first one in the theater. It was, and then it just kind of dwindled after that. So we'll have to see like after 
it gets released to Disney Plus and whatnot, uh, if I still feel as strongly about it on the second uh, viewing. Um, but really enjoyed it. Uh, I've found it to be better than the first Avatar. Um, not so cut and dry. And I mean, a little, you know, any, you watch as many movies as like I do, and I'm sure you guys do. Uh, most movies become predictable at a certain point, but you know, there's just only so many storylines out there. And then, uh, but it, it was fun. Uh, just a little less predictable than the first Avatar. Um, and yeah, just really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm not, I'm assuming it's going to go further down as I see the other movies. Uh, but so far, that's that's my pick for three. Um, fourth would be Banshees of Inishirin. I might swap that with Avatar, actually, because that one I, did, I enjoyed quite a bit. I really, really liked that one. Um, it, uh, it definitely bummed me out in a lot of parts, uh, as it is supposed to. Um, but... I just really enjoyed the story. It was a very interesting story, uh, very original. I found um, uh, didn't you know? I, I just from the trailer, I could tell it was going to be good, and it, it like I'd say it met my expectations. It didn't exceed. It didn't go below. So I'd say it's like right across. Like hey, that was good. It looked good, and it was good. And uh, you know what? Um, I'm not, off the top of my head, I can't think of a lot of Martin McDonough films. Uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of Three Billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Uh, I remember liking it. I saw it in the theater. I was like, oh, that was pretty good. And then I, I, I thought I really liked it, but then the more I thought about it, the then I just grew to like hate it. And I, don't, I, I really don't know why. Um, but uh, so far, that hasn't happened with this one. This one, I was just like, yeah, I'm still thinking about it and still think it was really good. Um, uh, I'll get more specific when we get to because obviously the actors are nominated for that film as well. So once I get to that category, I'll talk a little bit about more about the performances and everything. Um, uh, lastly, of all of uh, of the five that I've seen of Best Picture nominees, uh, I put Elvis in the bottom, and it's not that I didn't like that movie. It was just you know it didn't do anything that i wasn't surprised about and i think like the things that would are surprising about it aren't if you are familiar with boz lerman so it's just like like say like my mom saw it and she's like oh yeah it was a little different but like the things that made it different were just that's just how boz lerman is so i w i wasn't shocked by that uh but yeah it was a good movie um but it was just it was just okay, you know. That probably won't ever watch it again. It, it happened to coincide with me taking a history of rock and roll class, so uh, I had just learned about uh, all, all these facts about Elvis, and then it was cool to see uh, some of the things that I learned match match up in the film. Uh, all right, so but excited to see the other five uh, as I. As I see more things, maybe like once a week on Thursday until the until the ceremony happens, uh, I'll keep updating my list. Uh, I think I, I might not wait. You guys make I might not make you guys wait until the next Thursday after the ceremony for the final one. But uh, yeah, that that I think I'm just gonna stick to that schedule and then just whatever I've seen within that week, I'll do an episode and update my list all right next category best performance by an actor in a leading role we got austin butler as elvis from the movie elvis uh bill nye in the movie living brendan fraser for the film the whale colin farrell for the banshees of inishirin paul mescal for after sun uh, so I've only seen Austin Butler, uh, I've only seen Elvis and Banshees of Inishirin out of these. Uh, I would give it to Colin Farrell for this one. Um, I wouldn't be upset if Austin Butler won for Elvis, 
But in my opinion, I thought that Colin Farrell's performance uh, was a little better. Just in my opinion. Uh, not too much to add on that. Uh, so, yeah, just moving on from that one. That's a, that's a quick one. I've only seen the two. Uh, best performance by an actress in a leading role. Ana de Armas for Blonde. Andrea Riseborough. I think that's how you say that. To Leslie. Kate Blanchett for Tar, Michelle Williams for The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Um, I've only seen, out of those, I've only seen Everywhere All at Once at this point. So by default, it's going to her. Um, I won't, I wouldn't be surprised if she stays my number one pick. Um, I think if anyone's going to give her a run for money, based on what I've heard, it's Kate Blanchett. But more on that once I've seen Tar. Okay. Obviously a very big deal for her to be nominated too, because uh, according to Instagram, that she's the first Asian woman to be nominated for Best Actress in a Leading Role or Leading Role Oscar. So that's very exciting either way. Just... The nomination itself is historic, so, but super well, very well deserved if she does win, and I hope she does, because she's incredible in that. Just so, so perfect. Okay, moving on. Best performance by an actor in a supporting role. We have Barry Keoghan for Banshees of Inishirin. Brendan Gleeson for Brand Banshees of Inishirin, Brian Tyree Henry for Causeway, Judd Hirsch for The Fablemans, and Ki Hui Kwan for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, right off the bat, the the only I haven't seen Causeway, and I as I said before, I haven't seen The Fablemans yet, but um, I I'm going with Ki Hui Kwan for everything ever all at once because he did amazing. He blew me out of the water on that role. Uh, we all know him as Short Round from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom and uh, Data from the Goonies, or at least that's where I knew him from. And he hasn't really been doing much since then. So for him to like have this resurgence so much later in his life you know because he, he wasn't really doing much acting for a long time and for him to come back and just blow everyone away and he's already won the golden globe and i i'm hoping he goes all the way to the oscar uh because it's he just did such a good job i think i think he's the highlight of the film in my opinion uh it, everything's great in it everything everywhere all at once everything is great in it <laughs> i don't know i my brain like started working in a joke cadence and then it like i lost track and i don't know where i was going with that but all right um as for the two uh performances and banshees of in its year and it's hard for me to pick one over the other for when it comes to those two because i thought they both did amazing um maybe i liked i think that barry keoghan had more heart just in the character itself like just the character he was playing had like more heart so it's like obviously his performance had a little more heart too so i um would be great to see him win too uh still want it to go to key but hey i you know i don't want to be devastated because it's already just great enough that he got nominated too uh, all right moving on best performance by an actress in a supporting role we have angela bassett black panther wakanda forever hong chow for the whale jamie lee curtis for everything everywhere all at once Carrie Condon for the Banshees of Inishirin, and Stephanie Sue for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Okay, so the only one I haven't seen is The Whale. So I'm going to go with... I think Jamie Lee Curtis is the one I want to see win in this one. But 
with like just a 0.01% lead over Stephanie Sue because they're they're both incredible on that. But I also wouldn't be upset to see Angela Bassett win for Black Panther Wakanda Forever because she did amazing in that. And she had like the heaviest performance, I think, out of anybody in that film. Um, and it was already such an emotional film anyway with the loss of Chadwick Boseman. So it was just, it was just, she did so good at that. And Carrie Condon was great in Banshees of Inisherin too. So yeah, it's, it's anyone at this point like they're all deserving so is it this is a hard one so far of the acting of all the acting categories i think this is the most stacked and the most difficult decision in my opinion so all right next best achievement in directing we have dan kwan and daniel scheinert or known as the daniels apparently uh for everything everywhere all at once Martin McDonough for The Banshees of Inishirin, Ruben Ostland for Triangle of Sadness, Steven Spielberg, I oh, never heard of that guy, for The Fablemans, and Todd Field for Tar. Now this was, this blew my mind when I was looking up the nominees and everything. I didn't know that Todd Field, the director of Tar, was, until I saw the his picture, because I just heard the name Todd Field, but didn't have like a face to the name. It's Nick Nightingale from Eyes Wide Shut, and I had no idea. So that was really exciting to just for me as a fan of that movie, and that's already been an episode on this podcast. So far, my most popular episode. So, not whatever I did something right with that one. I don't know what it is. Something SEO maybe search engine optimization. I don't know, but. That was, that was very interesting, but I haven't seen that movie yet, so I can't speak to his directing. So it's just like, but so for me, the only ones I've seen, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Banshees and Sharon, I'm going to give the edge to the Daniels for Everything Everywhere All at Once. All right. Moving on to Best Original Screenplay. We had Everything Everywhere All at Once, written by the Daniels. We got Banshees of Sharon, written by Martin McDonough. Fablemans, Steven Spielberg, and Tony Kushner, Triangle of Sadness, Ruben Ostland, and Tar Todd Field. So, li- literally the same people from the directors. Yeah, literally. It, it's an exact matchup. Best original and best directing. Uh, the only difference is Tony Kushner helped Spielberg write Fablemans. So, I'm going to go with the same thing. Uh, just the everything everywhere all, all at once has the edge just for being such an interesting and unique story so Banshees of Inishirin was also pretty unique but not you know it's it wasn't doing anything that I that you haven't seen before so that's about it moving on from that one all right best adapted screenplay got all quiet on the western front Written by Edward Berger, Leslie Patterson, and Ian Stokel. Glass Onion, written by Ryan Johnson. Living by Kazuo Ishiguro. Ishiguro. Uh, Top Gun Maverick, written by Aaron Kruger, Eric Warren Singer, Christopher McQuarrie, Peter Craig, Justin Marks, and Women Talking, written by Sarah Polly. Um... Only seen two of these, Glass Onion and Top Gun Maverick. Uh, this is a hard one for me because I, I really did enjoy Glass Onion, but I might give it to Top Gun just because I think Glass Onion got a little too heavy-handed on the exposition, like in the middle of the movie and everything, and it just... I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun, but I think Knives Out was just a little bit better. And so it's I'd be fine to see this go to Top Gun. But, you know, I'm not going to be upset if Glass Onion wins because it was great. But, all right. Cinematography. Uh, 
I'm gonna by default my pick for this is Elvis because it's the only one I've seen out of these so far. But the nominees are All Quiet on the Western Front with uh, James Friend as the cinematographer, Bardo, False Chronicles of a Handful of Truths, Darius Kanji, Elvis, Mandy Walker, Empire of Light, Roger Deakins. That's a name I know. But still haven't seen that one yet. Uh, and Tar Florian Hoffmeister. So, I mean, the cinematography in Elvis is beautiful. So, so yeah, I'm. We'll see though with the other ones. Uh, moving on to best achievement in film editing, we have Elvis with Matt Via and Jonathan Redmond. We got Everything Everywhere All at Once, Paul Rogers. Got. Uh, Banshees of Inishirin, Mikkel E.G. Nielsen, Top Gun Maverick, Eddie Hamilton, and Tar Monica Willie. Uh, let's see. What was the... Uh, just because it's so jumping all over the place, a lot of quick cuts, but well done. It's not like in Bohemian Rhapsody where that one best editing for just having like random cuts and it cut like 700 times during a outdoor cafe scene and it was just pointless it, that let's be honest like the people voting for that one were just thinking about the live aid scene at the end and that was it so they saw that side-by-side -side video that was going around facebook of uh rami malik and freddie mercury and how like exact it was and they're like oh yeah that one's best editing forgetting about how like choppy it was throughout but i think everywhere all, everything everywhere all at once was very well edited um i'm not an editor so i'm sure there's you know someone out there it's like no like this one's better and everything like that so i can't like i don't have any expertise on this and so but that would be my pick but you know i wouldn't be too upset about any of the other ones all right best achievement in production design we got all quiet on the western front um I don't need to read any more of these names. I, I've, I'll, I'll keep doing it. Okay, I doubt any of them are listening and be like, "Hey, why did you stop reading my name?" But it, just to give them respect because they put in a lot of work, so their name should be known. So, uh, all quiet on the Western Front. Christian M. Goldbeck and Ernestine Hipper. Avatar: The Way of Water. Dylan Cole, Ben Proctor, and Vanessa Cole. Babylon. Florencia Martin and Anthony Carlino. Elvis, Catherine Martin, Karen Murphy, and Beverly Dunn. And the Fablemans, Rick Carter, Karen O'Hara. All right, so for this one, I'm going to go with Babylon just because that, that, uh, uh, that honestly might be tied for me for the number one movie of the year because it, that one was amazing. I'm really, I'm not too surprised it didn't get nominated for Best Picture. It was because it is, it did feel very uh, uh, polarizing because it is very extreme. But that's one of the things I liked about it. And honestly, like the first couple of minutes in the movie, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. And then, you know, they're thinking about that three hour runtime too. So, uh, but it it looked incredible it's a period piece it's big it's elaborate and everything like that they managed to find somewhere in california that looked like old hollywood because it definitely doesn't look like that now but it they they pulled it off but um avatar way of water like for production design mm, I feel like a majority of that production design is done on a computer. And not to say that that's not important or that's not valid or that's not impressive cuz it is. But I I'm biased again. I'm biased towards practical when it, especially when it comes to sets and production design. So, um Elvis did was good too though when it came to that. So, you know, that they deserve it if they win it, but my my personal pick is Babylon. I think just beautiful, beautiful sets. All right, moving on to best achievement in costume design. Here we go again with Babylon, Mary Zofres, 
Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Ruth E. Carter, Elvis, Catherine Martin, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Shirley Carada, and Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, Jenny Beaven. Uh, have not seen Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris yet, uh, but like uh, it's understandable for Babylon. Black Panther, Elvis, that those are nominated for best costumes. But my pick is going to be everything, everywhere, all at once, because all of the, like, parade of outfits of the main villain, Jobu Tobaki, like, are amazing. Like, so, like, random, and but random, but also specific and elaborate and over the top and just amazing like so many times like laughing at the different outfits and she it it just that's just my favorite that's the because that's something where there's already so much good happening in that movie and still the costumes stick out the other ones i'm like i'm i never thought during any of the other movies like oh this costume is really nice uh, but I did think that in everything ever well at once. So that's where I'm going to give that the edge. All right. Best sound. We got All Quiet on the Western Front, Victor Prazel, Frank Cruz, Marcus Stemmler, Lars Ginzel, and Stefan Corte. Court. Uh, Avatar The Way of Water, Julian Howarth. Gwendolyn Yates Whittle, Dick Bernstein, Christopher Boys, Gary Summers, and Michael Hedges, Elvis, David Lee, Wayne Pashley, Andy Nelson, Michael Keller, The Batman, Stuart Wilson, Will Files, Douglas Murray, Andy Nelson, uh, Top Gun Maverick, uh, Mark Weingert, James Mather, Al Nelson, Chris Burden, and Mark Taylor. Hmm. This is a hard one. I will say this, that I'm glad that best sound is just one category now because I could not tell you the difference between sound mixing and sound editing. Just me personally as a non-sound person, I just have no idea. And maybe that's obvious because for how shitty my podcast sounds but <laughs> like if you're a sound person you're like yeah no wonder he doesn't know the difference i don't i'm just being honest with you over there but so for this one right off the bat i'm gonna say top gun maverick i didn't see it in the theater so that's that's on me but a lot of like turn it up turn it down turn it up turn it down because it's like quiet conversation loud noise you know and that that's just seems to also just be all movies these days but it's just it gets annoying and someone needs to figure that out but i'm sure there's some setting and they're like just change the settings on your sound bar dumbass but hey i'm a busy guy um so because of my ignorance of knowing the difference between all of this uh I'd like to give it to the Batman just because, just to give that one some love. Uh, though I think, but I'd also like to give it that one. Oh, it's not like I that one only has to win once, but Batman sounded pretty good. I don't remember having to do too many like turn it up, turn it down on that. Uh, Elvis, uh, you got some good sound mixing in there. You got some good sound in there. See, there I am, like, using it like I know what it means. Um, Avatar, that sounded fine. They all sounded good, so I'm not going to be upset if any of them win. But I just know for Top Gun, that was the one I was having the most trouble turning it up and turning it down. Because um, the only one of these I saw in the theater was Avatar. Uh, so, yeah, just give it to whoever. But maybe not Top Gun. All right, best achievement in makeup and hairstyling. All quiet on the Western Front. Hike Merker, Linda Eisenhammerova. Oh, that's a cool name. Uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Camille Friend, and Joel Harlow. Elvis, Mark Coulier, Jason Baird, and Aldo Signoretti. 
The Batman, Michael Fontaine, Naomi Don, Michael Marino, and The Whale, Adrian Morat, Judy Chin, and Anne-Marie Bradley. Um, I'm going to give it to The Batman just because of how crazy different Colin Farrell looked as the Penguin. Like... There's no way I would have guessed. Like, if you know, if I didn't already have one billion articles before the movie was coming out that Colin Farrell's playing the Penguin and he's got a lot of makeup on, so it's like you're you already know before you see the reveal. Um, but if like if that didn't come out and they saved it for the trailer and then they just showed it and everyone's trying to guess who it is, I would Colin Farrell's not on that list of people that I was gonna guess who that is. So he looked incredible. Uh, so just for that, I think that gives it the strong edge, and I'd like to see it win. Um, I haven't seen The Whale yet, but um, we've all seen the trailer and the poster, and we see how Brendan Fraser, you know, kind of added some weight to him and everything like that. Um, seems to have done a good job with that, but, you know, I think the Penguin stuff's more impressive, to be honest. TBH. All right. Best Achievement in Music Written for Motion Pictures. Parentheses, original score. So, best original score. Uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, Volker Bertelman. Babylon, Justin Hurwitz. Everything Everywhere All at Once. Son Lo- Son Lo- Lux, or Sun Lux. Uh, the Banshees of Inishirin, Carter Burwell. And the Fablemans, John Williams. Uh, I'm only seeing those middle three. Uh, I think the music stuck out more in Babylon, in my opinion. But I mean, it was good. It was a good score in Everything Ever All at Once. It was a good sh- score in Banshees of Inisherin. Uh, haven't seen Fablemans yet, but. The huge John Williams stand, so you know, never gonna be upset if he wins. And I'm sure it sounds amazing because he always sounds amazing. So, I mean, give it to Babylon as of now, but we'll see once my eyes and ears happen upon the Fablemans. All right, best achievement in music written for motion pictures, parentheses, original song. Uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Thames, and Rihanna, Ryan Coogler, and Ludwig Goransson. I don't know if Ryan Coogler helped write the song, but that's cool. Uh, the song was called Lift Me Up. Uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Ryan Lott, David Byrne, oh, cool, from Talking Heads, and Mitski, and she's good too. Uh, this is a Life, um, RRR, Rise, Roar, Revolt, original title. Oh, okay. Uh, M.M. Caravani and Chandra Bose. Bose. Uh, Natu Natu is the song. Uh, Tell It Like a Woman, Diane Warren, Applause, and Top Gun Maverick, Lady Gaga, and Blood Pop for the song Hold My Hand. Um, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't remember the song from Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, I do remember the black panther one and maybe it's just because it kicks on during the credits and i'm already crying so maybe that's why that one might have the edge because they're taking advantage of my uh emotional state at the time um and lady gaga is always good so wouldn't be happy with that one i'm seeing a lot of buzz for this rrr one not to not to but i haven't seen that one yet so if anything's gonna take over for me in my opinion it's probably gonna be that one but as of now i'm gonna go with the lift me up rihanna black panther wakanda forever best achievement in visual effects we got all quiet on the western front frank petzold victor moeller marcus frank and camille jafar we got avatar the way of water with joe latiri richard banaham Eric Sandin and Daniel Barrett. For Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, we got Jeffrey Bowman, Craig Hammock, R. Christopher White, and Daniel Suddick. The Batman, Dan Lemon, Russell Earl, 
Anders Langlands, Dominic Tui. And for Top Gun Maverick, we have Ryan Tudhope, Seth Hill, Brian Litson, and Scott R. Fisher. Best visual effects. Hmm. <laughs> Top Gun might be the cleanest. Top Gun and the Batman, I'd say. Um, but I haven't seen All Quiet yet. I'm sorry I keep saying like over and over again. I haven't seen that one yet. But I, I just have to. But uh, Because Black Panther, there's definitely a couple times where I'm like, oh, that looks a little bad. Um, and Avatar, it looks incredible. And it is really well, but there's still it just still feels a little video gamey sometimes. Um, not to be down on video games, so I think I'm just gonna say a tie between the Batman and Top Gun. But I've also seen some like side by side comparisons of the practical shot and the fi final shot of All Quiet on the Western Front, and so that that was pretty impressive. So I might give it to that after I've seen it, but. As of now, the Batman and Top Gun. All right. For best documentary feature, we got A House Made of Splinters, All That Breathes, All the Beauty and Bloodshed, Fire of Love, and Navalny. I've only seen Fire of Love. That one's on Disney+. Plus. Uh, it was good. This is about a uh, couple of... Um, Volcano volcanologists, so they study volcanoes. Uh, they're a married couple that does that. Uh, it was very interesting. It has a sad ending and everything, but I mean, they tell you right in the beginning what's going to happen at the end, uh, so it's no no big shock or anything. Uh, and you know, the fact that they study volcanoes, I mean, you can probably assume what happens to them. Uh, but yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, I'll update as I try to see the other ones. These are the categories where it gets a little harder to seek out the films. Luckily, I do live near LA, so I might be able to find like a theater that does like shows all the documentary shorts together or all the animated shorts and live action shorts. I know sometimes they do that, but uh, so yeah, hopefully I can get to the rest of those. I know. Navalny is on HBO Max, I believe. Uh, I have that written down somewhere. Uh, best animated feature film. Uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. The Sea Beast and Turning Red. Uh, so far, the only one I've seen is Turning Red. I absolutely loved that one, uh, but I am looking forward to seeing the other ones if I get the chance. Uh, Especially Marcel the Shell with shoes on him. Uh, but then also, Puss in Boots is getting a lot of buzz. Which I was surprised because I feel like people may not have liked the first one all that much. But maybe they did. I just don't remember. Um, the last Shrek movie that I like really liked was Shrek 2. Um, Alright, best animated short film. An ostrich told me the world is fake and I think I believe him. Believe it. Sorry didn't mean to gender the ostrich uh ice merchants my year of dicks interesting title the boy the mole the fox and the horse and the flying sailor so i have seen the boy the mole the fox and the horse that is on apple tv plus and that is a beautiful animated short it uh deals with it i think it's a metaphor for depression uh, is what I was reading about it or reading into it as just really good really 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 good I really liked it it's like 30 minutes long if you have Apple TV plus give it a shot because that was it was beautiful loved it um, right off the bat I haven't seen any of these but I'm gonna list the best live action short films an Irish goodbye Ivalu Le Pupil uh natrican and the red suitcase um haven't seen any of these either uh best documentary short film how i think i don't know 
if I knew the country of origin or language of origin, I might be able to better pronounce these, but I don't for some of these. Uh, how do you measure a year? Stranger at the gate. The elephant whisperers. The Martha Mitchell effect. Um, I should buy next time. Hopefully I've seen some of these. I know I think a couple of them are on Netflix. Uh, and also haven't seen these yet. Uh, and this is the last category. Uh, best international feature film. All Quiet on the Western Front. Argentina, 1985. Close. EO. And The Quiet Girl. Um, uh... Some of uh, Argentina 1985 is on Amazon, I believe. Uh, All Quiet's on Netflix. Uh, I am interested to see EO. I feel like I've seen a few people on Letterboxd that I follow giving good reviews for that. So uh, that one I'm interested in. I'm interested in seeing all of them. Uh, this is usually a pretty good category. Um, everyone, like, if, if you're not, if, like... Uh, Bong Joon Ho said it really well in uh, in his acceptance speech. I don't remember if it was when he won for best uh, international feature or if it was when he won for best picture. But he was talking about that subtitles are a one inch barrier that uh, if you let it will keep you from watching some of the most amazing movies. So just like get over that little barrier. Like all you got to do is read, and that's it. Like. If if that's if that's your buffer, if that's what's keeping you from watching uh, f lang uh, foreign language film, then like don't let it. Like just watch it because they're amazing. Like you're missing out on so many great films. Um, all right, so that is it. That brings us to the end. Uh, really looking forward to watching uh, more of these. Uh, seems to be a good year. A um, little bummed about. Uh, Babylon not getting nominated for best picture but I I'm not that bummed because I really want everything everywhere else wants to win because that um, Babylon was good it was very good and maybe a little better but it's just so similar to so many other movies that always it's just it's an over the plate Oscar bait movie because it's like old Hollywood and period piece and long and good cinematography and a uh, big name director uh damien Ch damien chazelle so yeah it's but it was amazing uh, i really liked it uh so but yeah uh stay tuned next week next thursday i'll update again and uh, uh once i've seen some more movies uh maybe plan on get have some time off tomorrow so uh definitely planning on knocking a few of these more few more of these out uh, all right, so until then, uh, have a good week, and uh, see you on Tuesday for our, our regular scheduled regular movie episodes. All right, thanks. Bye.